Hello everyone, this is your new class with a new topic and uh, today's topic is thermodynamics. So let us start, so mainly to start uh, before starting our today's discussion, uh, first we have to know about what is thermodynamics, thermodynamics basically it the term actually came from, from two Greek words, what is therm and another one is dynamics. So, therm means heat and dynamic means force. So, in thermodynamics mainly we actually deal with uh, heat and the work, okay. So, that work may be produced due to the heat that actually uh, happen in any engine uh, or it may be work that is converted into heat ok. So, anything can be possible and today we will learn all about this thermodynamics. So, let us start with a basic law that is called Joule's law. So, that actually says that when you are working that means uh, some work has been done and this work is converted into heat, then amount of heat that is produced due to this work is exactly proportional to the amount of work is done, ok. So, that means amount of heat produced is exactly proportional to the amount of work is done W. So, W equals to J into H where J is a uh, proportionality constant, ok. It is sometimes called Joule's constant. So, the value of J is actually 4.2 joule per calorie or 4.2 into 10 to the power 7 R per calorie, ok. So, simple example for, uh, for using this type of equation or joules equation where actually it uh, works well. So, let us just rub your hands, take, ok. So, you will find your hands gets warm. So, why it is like, why it is happening? So, mainly during rubbing you are actually doing work against the friction and that work is actually converted into heat, ok. So, that is all about the Joule's law, ok. So, lot more of examples are there where actually works, work is actually being converted into heat. So, Joule's law can be thought of a beginning of the thermodynamics, but it is not all about thermodynamics. So, thermodynamics is a vast thing and it is quite different from the Joule's law, ok. So, let us start with the thermodynamics. Now, to begin with thermodynamics, we have to know some term related to it. So, one thing is system. What is system? So, first we have to know about the environment. What is environment? Environment is everything. That means, the thing that we saw, that we see, the thing that we feel, all is within the environment, ok. Me, you, your family, your home, your uh, coaching center, your school, everything actually constitute the un environment, ok. So, that is the thermodynamic. So, that is the universe. And not environment that is actually universe, ok. So, instead of environment, it will be more fruitful to use the term universe, ok. So, that is actually universe, ok. So, what is system? System is the part of the universe which is under observation, ok. So, that is the part of the universe that is being observed by any observer ok or examined by any researcher, any examiner ok. And what is surroundings? Surroundings is except the system, anything inside the universe is referred as the surroundings ok. So, this is the two basic concept of thermodynamics, one is system, another one is surrounding. Now, there are mainly two ty three types of system, one is open system another one is closed system, another one is isolated system. So, this catac this actually classification is based on the energy mass transformation or energy mass exchange, ok. So, 
first one is open system open system is a type of system that can actually exchange mass and energy with the surrounding like you are boiling a water in a open container okay that means the vapor is produced is actually trans transported to the environment or transported to the surroundings at the amount of energy also being also it is some amount of energy is radiated and also some amount of energy is carried out by the vapor itself okay so that is a open system now what is closed system a closed system is a such type of system where mass exchange is not permissible but energy exchange is permissible that same thing the boiling of water but now you are boiling a water in a closed container that means vapor is not coming out so that means mass exchange is uh, restricted but energy exchange is permissible some amount of energy is also continuously radiating in the environment okay so that is the thing what is isolated system isolated system is a completely sealed or packed system that is not going to exchange mass or energy with the surrounding okay so that is a isolated system so ideal isolated system is not possible but the thermo flask that we use that is a partially isolated system that's why the cold thing remains cold for a long time and the hotter the hot thing remains hot for a longer time okay so after dealing with the system we have to learn about some variables that is related to the system so what are the variable variable as the measurable quantities in the system like if you uh, think about a system that is maybe a gas okay the system can be anything that anything that is under observation that is a system so let's think about a system that is a gas so measurable quantity for a gas is its pressure its volume its temperature its uh, its, 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 its 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 internal energy its enthalpy its density its mass these are the measurable quantities okay then this is called this these all measurable quantities are termed as the variables okay so variables can also be categorized into two classifications one is intrinsic variables another one is extrinsic variable intrinsic variables are those variables those are independent of the size of the system mass of the system or volume of the system and extrinsic system those are solely depends on the mass or the volume or the size of the system okay so we simply can think of the intrinsic variables like these are the density density of a uh, cup of water is exactly same to the density of a water which is in a big jar okay that means uh, that doesn't vo matter the volume of the water okay or the it may be specific heat capacity specific heat capacity of the water of that jar and of that cup both are the same okay now what is the extrinsic variable example is heat a simple example you need a smaller amount of heat to heat to, to heat it up the uh, to heat it up a cup of water in compare in comparison to the uh, a jar of water or a bottle of water okay or then internal energy weight weight is very uh, very uh, understandable uh, example so weight of a cup of water must be very small compared to a jar of water or if a bottle of water or of a big container of water okay so these are two different variables one is intrinsic variable another one is extrinsic variable so why we are actually so much interested about the variables to know that we have to wait for some minute so then we have to first learn about the equilibrium now what is equilibrium so equilibrium is a steady condition of a system steady condition means the variables in the system is not changing with time that is called equilibrium okay those variables are fixed with time that is called the equilibrium okay so for thermodynamics we consider three type of equilibrium one is mechanical equilibrium 
second one is chemical equilibrium and third one is thermal equilibrium. Now, what is chemical equilibrium? Chemical equilibrium, sorry, first one is mechanical equilibrium. So, what is mechanical equilibrium? It is all about mechanical forces that is applying on the system. Those are applying on the system. So, this is all about this thing. So, what is mechanical equilibrium? Mechanical equilibrium means the system does not have any kind of unbalanced force on it. That means, if there, there, there may be force present, but that force must be balanced. That means, the system must not have any kind of acceleration or any kind of deformation. Okay? That is all about the mechanical equilibrium. So, that means, the system must have balanced force. That is the condition for the mechanical equilibrium. Okay? Now, what is this chemical equilibrium? Chemical equilibrium has a condition. So, that is the system must possess the mechanical equilibrium. Okay? Until or unless system must be in the mechanical equilibrium, you cannot apply the condition for the chemical equilibrium. Why is it so? Because if there is a some unbalanced force on the system, it may happen, it looks like the system is in chemical equilibrium for now, but it may happen after a certain time, it can shift or it can change from the equilibrium state. Okay? So, let us first know what is equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium is a type of equilibrium where the chemical composition of the material or the uh, substance within the system remains same throughout the system. That means, here the chemical composition and there both be, must be same. Okay. So, that is the chemical equilibrium. So, what is the chemical composition? That may be composition, mixture, the ratio or the maybe its density. Okay. So, that may that is the chemical equilibrium. Uh, if the system is not in the mechanical equilibrium, it may happen due to the application of the pressure or due to application of the unbalanced force. Certain portion of the system must get the higher density, certain portion must get the lower density. Okay. So, that means to attain the chemical equilibrium condition of the mechanical equilibrium must be hold. Okay. And the third condition is thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium has two constraint system must be in mechanical equilibrium as well as chemical equilibrium. If then the temperature of the system remains constant with time, that means system is not exchanging heat with the surroundings with time. So, that means the system is in thermal equilibrium. System in thermal equilibrium also called system in thermodynamic equilibrium. That means the system in thermal equilibrium actually poses thermal equilibrium, chemical equilibrium and mass mechanical equilibrium as well. Okay? So, that means the system in thermodynamic equilibrium that means no variable in the system is going to change with time. Okay? So, let assume a gaseous system. So, what is the state of the system? State of the system is the value of the variables of the or the measurable quantities at a particular equilibrium. Okay? So, that means, state of the system is defined by a value of the variables or measurable quantities at an equilibrium, at an, equi at an equilibrium. Okay? So, now, let a system is in an equilibrium where the variables have the value P, V and T. Okay? This value that means the pressure, volume, and temperature, these are the observable quantity for a gas gaseous system, okay. Main observable quantities. So, P V T. Now, with time, this pressure, volume, temperature must be fixed because the system is in equilibrium. But if it changes, now if it changes from P V T to P1, V1, T1, then system is not in the equilibrium or it is changing its state. Okay. Now, this is called state. Each equilibrium condition is called state. Okay? Now, equation of state. Equation of state is the relationship between the these variables A at equilibrium. Okay? So, that means, this P, V, T, these are the variables 
and what is the equation of state? Equation of state is the relation between this pressure volume at temperature at an equilibrium. As we know for ideal gas P V equals to N R T. So, this is called the equation of state for an ideal gas. Okay. So, this equation can, ch can change with uh, different conditions. Okay. We will look into that. Now, work done on any system. So, so far we all read about some basic things about the thermodynamics. Now, you have to keep in mind that uh, we will discuss all about the gaseous system in our discussion. Okay. Neither liquid system nor solid system will be considered. Okay. So, let us start a gaseous system and consider a gaseous system and work done by this system. Okay. So, then we will learn the rest. So, now let this is a system. Okay. This was the system that was the initial state of the system where this is the position of the initial initial position of the uh, piston okay and the gas was there with, within the cylinder now the pressure on the piston was p external pressure was p internal pressure was also p that's why the system remains in that state okay so piston was raised at that position now some heat some amount of heat was transferred to the system. So, the system will expand and this piston will go out. Since internal, a, internal pressure of the system will rise compared to the external pressure. External pressure is fixed. So, the piston actually displaced against the external pressure P. Okay? Now, if area of the piston is A, then force on the piston will be P into A, F equals to pressure into area. Okay. Now, this system or this piston actually displaces against the force F. Okay. So, that means for this displacement, for this amount of displacement dx, this piston or this system has done some work uh, that is given by F into dx, force multiplied by the displacement. So, force here P times A. Okay. Just keep this P out and take A dx together. So, A dx, A is your area of cross section and dx is this displacement of the piston. The A dx will be the volume of this region that is actually the difference or the volume change. Initially volume was this much, now volume is this much. So, that is your change in volume. So, A dx is dv that is your change in volume. So, your work done will be dw equals to p multiplied by the dv. Okay? This is your total work done. This is for a very small amount of change dv. Now, if you want a work, find out the work done for a very large amount of change, you have to integrate this, this equation. Okay? Now, internal energy, this is another term related to the system. This all terms are related to any system. These are the things that a system can do or that a sy system can have. Okay? So, what is internal system? Now, we have considered our system is a gaseous system. Now, for a gas, as we know, the atoms are not in rest. Rather, they are moving uh, with a very high speed. Okay? And the motion of the atoms are very random. That means, one atom is going towards east, another one may be towards west, another one is moving towards south, another can move towards some other direction. So, that is very random in nature. Okay. So, if these atoms are moving, that means they have some kind of a kinetic energy. Okay. So, so, that means every atom in the gas must have some amount of energy. So, total system, that means total, if you add energies of each and every visual system, each and individual atoms, you will get a total amount of energy and that amount of energy is actually uh, possessed by the system. So, the system actually have that amount of energy. So, that is called internal energy. So, internal energy is actually the 
sum of the total energy of each atoms. So that means this is your internal energy. Now for ideal gas, as you know, uh, for ideal gas, the interaction between atoms is not possible. That means it is our consideration. So there is no interaction between atoms for uh, ideal gas. So that means. Uh, there is no attraction force or repulsion force between atoms that means there will be no uh, potential energy since potential energy always comes due to any kind of force field that means if there is no force acting on any object there will be no potential energy on the object or in the object okay so that is the thing uh, so that means for ideal gas gas atoms can only have the kinetic energy not any kind of potential energy Okay, and we will see it later. The motion of any gas atom is actually depends on its temperature or its speed. Speed of each gas atom is actually proportional to the root of the temperature. So, C is the speed of the gas atom. It is it's not speed. It is RMS velocity. That is root mean square velocity. We will learn it later is proportional root of t that means it depends on the temperature only so that means the for ideal gas since the gas atoms only has the kinetic energy and that motion is completely related motion sorry motion of gas atoms actually depends on the temperature so that means the kinetic energy is only function of temperature so internal energy for the ideal gas is only depends on the temperature of the gas system okay but for the real gas real gas the atoms of the gas has a minimum amount of interaction so that means they has a force of attraction between them that means each and every atom has some amount of potential energy together with the kinetic energy so kinetic energy it is a function of temperature now potential energy now potential energy is all about the force of attraction between the atoms now if the distance be between the atom decreases or it distance between the atoms increases that means the interaction will change and the, that will that has an effect on the potential energy that means potential energy of the atoms actually changes with their relative position that means the distance between them and distance between them distance between the atoms can be changed by using the pressure or by changing the volume so that means the potential energy is a function of pressure volume as well temperature because that temperature actually uh, changes the motion that means that can change the relative position of the atoms as well so that means kinetic energy is only function of so that means the internal energy has two components one is kinetic energy another one is potential energy kinetic energy only depends on the temperature but potential energy now depends on pressure volume and temperature so as a whole the internal energy of a real gas system depends on on the three variables that is pressure volume temperature okay so we have learned about all things that we should know to learn the first law of thermodynamics so that is first law of thermodynamics actually states that if a system got some amount of energy dq get some amount of heat dq so that heat actually used in two way first a part of it a part of it is used uh, to heated up the system that means to increase the internal energy and another part of the heat actually is used to do some amount of work so that means if you have a system this is a system you have a system and you have given a amount of heat dq to it so this amount of heat actually system use this heat in two different way okay a portion of the heat is used to heated up the system that means to you increase its internal energy and another portion of the heat is used to do some amount of work 
so that means total amount of energy heat is if we if the amount of heat is given to the system is dq and change in internal energy that means increase in internal energy du and work done is dw that means this two thing has came from has come from this dq as well so that means dq is actually du plus dw okay uh, so that means this is a simple simple this is very simple and it is actually conservation of energy so first law of thermodynamics is actually conservation of energy okay now as we know dw is your pdv so that is the uh, another form of first law that is dq equals to du plus pdv okay that is all about the first law of thermodynamics so this is all about today's class now in our next class we will learn about uh, some different uh, specific heat capacities of a uh, gas of any gas and then we will learn about uh, different type of processes okay so thank you